Hey everybody, welcome back. S&P closed right around that 5047.25. Now this is where it gets interesting because that is the bar from CPI. And this is the bar that we have completely blown off. And I think this is pretty fascinating stuff. And I was trying to figure out why and what's the rationale for it and why it's happening. Let's pull that over a little bit. But I do think there's are some things here that we need to go over in regards to CPI and PPI tomorrow. We need to go over retail sales. I really want to spend some time on Empire State Manufacturing just so you can understand a couple of things that I think are really pertinent. But we can't ignore the fact that this kind of happened everywhere, didn't it? Now, when I say it happened everywhere, what I mean is it happened right here with the ES. It happened on the NQ to the same extent, right? NASDAQ, we just got right back over like it was nothing. It's actually the weakest. And then, of course, the one that is the most baffling to everybody is just going to be what's happening here with the RTY, the Russell 2000, because you can just see the rally. And everyone's like, oh, this is because of SMCI. Well, that's a little ridiculous to say it's one stock that just caused the entire rally. Because if we take a look at SMCI, right, SMCI has been going up forever now. And it's up again after hours. We'll see what, what it you know actually does in the morning. But what's fascinating about this is it's been going up anyway. So you can't really say, oh, this is all SMCI because what happened this day? No, it's definitely more than that. And you can see it in KRE. Now, here's where this gets super interesting because here's the gap right down when we had the hot CPI, which we're all aware of. And then we gap up, right? We have this little move higher overnight. You can say it, and then we gap again. And you're like, well, it must be NYCB. That must be doing it. No, and NYCB can't get over. So then you start going, okay, well, what is actually doing it? And is it just, you know, is it other little regional names that are doing it? And the answer is, yeah, they're starting to get a little stronger, some of these other regional names, FCNCA. So then we have to ask ourselves, is it really just one bank's issue? Maybe it is. Maybe it's one bank's issue because this is start, certainly forming a flag. And you look at this close and go, wait a minute, that's an all-time high close. And that's pretty impressive. Now, this was the other bank that bought assets back here when those two, when everything was imploding from a year ago. And this one's closing at all-time highs. So certainly people are not concerned by that. And before we dive into this and before we get into the CPI, PPI tomorrow, what happened today with retail sales, I want to take one moment and just look at this. We have a ton of earnings to go over and there's a ton to go through here. But really just on the sector front, we're going to do the most basic of sectors here. And then we're going to just take the SPY with those sectors. We're not going to do all 40. We're just going to do 11 right now. And then we're going to just click here. We're going to look at a five minute chart and we're going to drop that five minute chart to a regular time frame. And then we're going to take this line to the 15th. And then from here, we're just going to make sure that that should be zeroed out the way I had it before. Let's make sure that we're zeroed. You're roughly zeroed. All right. So what happened? KRE. It's the highest, XLE, XLRE, XBI. Well, these are all, what do these all have in common? They're all interest rate sensitive. So what is this telling us? Well, this is telling us a couple things. This is telling us that the interest rate sensitive names are what's rallying. Well, why is that Why is that what's rallying if CPI is so bad, if they're going to do what? If they're not going to cut rates, right? If they're not going to cut rates when we think they're going to cut rates, then why are they doing this? This is where it gets interesting. Now, so you can do this yourself. I'm going to leave this right up here. CME Group Markets Interest Rate Fed Watch Tool. This is a free site. Anybody can do this. And what this is showing you is this is showing you the probability that they're going to hike or cut. And it shows you the current rate up here. Let's get our little pointer. And you can see the date. So this is for March. And again, here's the free website. I always try to use free websites wherever I can. So 525, 550. And this is the probability that we're going to stay there in March. So you have an 89.5% chance that you're going to stay there. You have a 10.5% chance of what? Of a rate cut. Okay. And then you come here and you go, well, where were we a week ago? And you can see the 81% chance that you're going to stay here, that that's now a 90% chance that you're going to stay here. And you can see the percentage change in a rate cut. Then you could actually go through this and you can click through May or you can click through June and you can see the movements through this period of time, right? For time's sake, we're not going to do all of them, but you get the gist of it where you can see this is where we are. There's a 63% chance in May that you still do not have a rate cut. You have to go out to June now to get a 50% chance of a rate cut. And now what's important about this is we look at the data below and in two days, has any of this data changed? None of this data has changed. All right, so none of the data and none of the percentages have changed. But at the same time, if we take a look at this, how is this playing out? Well, this is telling you that they're making bets. 
in the equity markets from this period over, and we're going to go back to it, but from that period over, that interest rates are a little a little high and that they're going to come down. And then you go and take a look at the bond market. And let's put that in a base chart right now and just look at that. So this is TNX and this is the 10 year. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go from Okay, so this is obviously the peak. And we always talk about these peaks, don't we? We always want to mark those peaks off so we can kind of see how we're acting from the date when that news hit. And then we can kind of see this drift and just drop right around that 11 o'clock on Wednesday. Okay, so right around there, 11 o'clock on Wednesday. And then we're just going to come to something you know, along the same lines and just go, all right, 11 o'clock on Wednesday, go to the 14th. And, all right, well, here's 12, 11. And then what kind of happened right around there? Oh, right, well, the market kind of kind of ripped on that time, didn't it, at 11 o'clock on Wednesday. Now, one of the things that we do, especially in the Alpha Chasers community, is we focus on bond auctions. We just want to know what's going on. This is where it gets somewhat interesting because look at this bond auction on Wednesday. And you always want to watch the bond auctions right now. Don't watch what they say, watch what they do. So this was the previous, and this is where you're at. So you're telling me that all this news and they're paying three basis points more. So this went better than expected, the 17-week bill auction. And we're not really paying attention to that one because it's 17 weeks, and we re it's really kind of an ancillary one, so we don't really pay attention to it. You know, you pay attention to the 10-year, the 30-year, the four-week, the eight-week. Someone says 17 weeks, you kind of go in your head, geez, geez, who really needs 17-week paper? But nonetheless, we have it, and here you go. So there it is, three basis points. Okay, so now you're saying, well, why do I care about your three basis points? Well, that was the bottom of the market. So if you start looking at this, and then again, and I want to show you how to do this because we're going to do this with Bitcoin in a moment, and this is really important. So then you go IWM, and then at the same time, well, we should probably do it RTY, so we stick with everything the same, shouldn't we? And then we're just going to do ES here and just drop that in as well. And then I'll go here and I'll take out the IWM. And then we're just going to go, so we have ES in here. Oh, that's put in in queue, my bad. And thank you for not caring whether or not these are edited. Also, do me a favor, guys, please start to share these again. Uh, I don't run ads, and every once in a while, the algorithm will remind me that I don't uh, and stop showing these as much. And also make sure that you do subscribe and hit the all notifications because I'm probably going to start doing some impromptu lives or lives that you haven't seen uh, to start answering questions. I'm getting a lot of questions. I don't know if I'm going to do them here. I did start an Instagram account to do them as well. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But if you take a look from where we're at on the 15th, take a look at the day, RTY outperforming. All right, so let's go back to what we were talking about and let's look at this period in time. Well, for all three, what is this? Well, it's the bottom from there. Well, what happened right around this period of time? The bond auction. And it's it's not one, it's all of them, all right? So you're right around here. It's not exact, but between 11 and 12 o'clock, this is where you're at. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy when you think about it, how easy that was to take a look at. And again, isn't technical analysis amazing when you can go through and take a look at it uh, later on in the day? But you're, you're getting it. So what are they doing? Well, they're pretending that they're not buying bonds, but they're buying bonds. And, and that's what they're doing. So if we go and take a look at that and go, isn't that really interesting? Because we're told that, well, that clearly this is going to go out to June. And maybe it is going to June but maybe there's a reason they're buying bonds. Now, maybe they're buying bonds because they think the market's in, in worse shape than it is, right? Because that, that could be it. We're going to get to why that's not the case in a moment. Uh, that, that's not why they're doing it. So, all right, so we can take a look at this. Now, we all know CPI's number was adjusted because in January, that's where you sign the contracts, right? You sign the contracts in January. If you didn't know that, you rebalance and you sign all your new contracts, and that's what the CPI data is. There's a really important distinction that I want to get into between CPI and PPI. PPI is done on one day, on the 13th. That's where they get all their data from. CPI is done over the course of a month. There's a distinction there. And there's two other distinctions we're going to get to in a moment. So you look at ES and you look at what's going on there. And you just take a moment before we get into stock. And you take a look at the bond market today. Well, why why did we stop going down, right? Why did they stop selling the 20-year? Well, high yield. They still must be selling high yield. Now they're buying high yield. Well, rates are, rates, they're, they're going to go higher. So why are they buying high yield, okay? So something's not adding up. Watch what they do, not what they say, right? That's what you have to do here. That's what's really important about this. Now, watch this. So we start the day off with retail sales. And retail sales are super weak, right? Because here's the previous, here's the consensus, and here's where we're at. So surely they're probably going to cut rates now sooner than expected. Well, then you get into that number on the Empire State. You remember that number that came out and everybody was panicked, Empire State Manufacturing, because you came in at a level that you haven't seen since the pandemic? Okay, well, it looks like that's an anomaly because now we're here. So 
Retail sales is worse. Someone needs to tell Williams and Sonoma and all these companies that are crushing. And all of a sudden, this has gotten better. Well, what's going on here with manufacturing? Because last time we had a negative number in Philly, the Philly Fed manufacturing. And these are starting to become big numbers that people are not paying attention to. And because you watch these, you now know, start watching these numbers. And you see here where you were before it. So now you have a positive manufacturing index out of Philly instead of a negative. All right, so then we keep going. X autos, well, they were supposed to be up, but we know car prices are dropping. Why do we know that? We know that because we read CPI line by line, right? Or that's just me in my free time. All right, so then you start going through these other numbers and you can kind of see, yeah, some of them you want to pay attention to, some of them you don't. But this, again, gets fascinating. I think so the economy is so weak, right, that they're going to have to cut rates. Retail keeps going higher, right? I mean, look at where we're at here with retail. All right. And then you go and take a look at names like, and we've been looking at these names and talking about these names. And they're, they're going over these names all the time and the pre-market. And if I have time, I want to explain something today if I have the time. But I really want to get to this because this is really important for you to know for tomorrow. Look at ELF. Look at these names, guys. Look at Ralph Lauren. Look at these names. And this is up after hours, breaking up another high another hammer on Ralph Lauren, right? So when you start going through these names, okay, now they're almost new high close, another new high, Louis Vuitton. Right, so what's going on? Because they're telling you that it's that it's bad. So something's not adding up here. Is the consumer bad or is the consumer not bad? Forget about this going straight up. We'll get to it in a minute. And don't worry, it's up another 3%. So we're all safe. But at the end of the day, what's really going on? Well, this is where I think the disconnect is. All right, so we're going to have data. That data tomorrow is going to be PPI. Now, as I stated, this data, when it comes out, it's calculated at once, right? They're expecting a negative number. Now, PPI, the easiest way to explain PPI is what they pay. CPI is what we pay. We want the burrito. They want to go and buy beef for the burrito to put the beef in. That's what PPI is. The difference between those two, between PPI and CPI, if you think of it as corporate profit, it'll make your life a lot easier and it won't hurt your brain just trying to figure out where all the nuances are. Some people will argue it. I really don't care. Score PPI month over month and you can see the numbers. Well, clearly this is going to come in higher, right? You also have housing starts. Before I forget, we did this video two weeks ago talking about, and this is, hopefully you can see that these are all connected. That's why I always say, when you watch one, you just want to keep watching them because they're all connected. I follow through the points. So we talked about when this gets over 75, okay, this was the previous 79. This is consensus. This is the forecast. Once this got over 75, going long, what? Retail names. So if you watch that two weeks ago, you're ahead of the curve. Now, this is the data that's coming out and we're all expecting it to be bad. But is it going to is it going to be bad because they're buying bonds ahead of it? They're buying interest rate sensitive names as fast as they possibly can today. The Russell's up two and a half percent. If you're in the community, you already know this. If you're not, be aware that I read research all day long. So especially in the morning, I, I have a huge Dropbox. All this research goes into it. I read the research and then I come out and I assess where I need to go. I use fundamental research a lot in like my thought process. So this is CPI and this wasn't from there. This, this is just, I got this uh, tangentially from somewhere else. But so this is CPI and this is what beat. So here is all items excluding food and energy. So that's core CPI. This is everything that beat. This is everything that didn't beat that would have you under everything that beat everything that didn't beat. Got it? Good. All right, so you have piped utility gas, hospital service, motor vehicles, airlines, non-alcoholic beverages, electricity, physician services, food, fruits. All right, now this is where it gets really important. Piped utility gas service. All right, electricity. See how these are up here? Motor, motor, motor vehicle maintenance and repair. Motor vehicle insurance. Forget about hospital and airfares. Now, I started going through the compartmentalization of what PPI is because I just like looking this stuff up. I look at the market as a puzzle and if I can't figure it out, I start trying to put the pieces together. So then I start looking at this and I got this from the BLS website because I couldn't figure out why are they buying bonds ahead of this? And then on top of that, why are they buying the interest rate sensitive stocks that they had to get out of? Remember this, and I say it a lot, you're playing against the smartest, most disciplined people in the world, right? And they're always looking for an edge. So they read CPI and they realize that, wait a minute, even though it says up here, if you really dig into it, it's probably really more like here, okay? And the difference between here, there's some discrepancies that have the possibility of making PPI come in a little bit lighter. So where are we again? We have discrepancies between here, right, to here, and then discrepancies between here and here, and then, of course, between here and here. So somewhere in here lies the truth. But realistically, the way that I think that the larger funds are looking at it is they're not looking at it as this is the real number. I think they're looking at it more down here. And I'll, I'll explain that 
and what to look for tomorrow. Though the number's off because of the seasonality and also the contracts settle. It's new contracts going in, and then you also have next month. We'll get into that next month. But for now, this is the difference between how PPI and CPI are calculated. And remember what we just went through. Remember those pieces. If not, you can go back and rewind the video. PPI and CPI categorize the number of goods and services differently for their index structure. PPI, CPI categorize number of goods and services differently within their index structures. Differences in categorization for goods and services are mitigated at a high level of aggregation and can create discrepancies at lower levels. The PPI, for example, classifies utilities such as electric power and natural gas as goods while CPI categorizes at services. See the difference. What was the number one thing that we just went through there? Natural gas. How do they categorize it as goods? CPI categorize utilities at services. See the discrepancy. Do you think that discrepancy could make PPI possibly come in lower while CPI was higher? The overall PPI for personal consumption and the CPI both include utilities. However, the PPI for personal consumption services excludes utilities. The PPI for personal consumption services excludes utilities. Do you think that that might be an issue considering that was one of the things that made core CPI higher? While the CPI services utilities are included, making the two services less comparable than the overall index. Hmm. The PPI and CPI also differ in the categorization treatment of trade and transportation. PPI separates cost of transporting, insurance, goods, wear and tear, retailing and wholesaling goods from the cost of the goods itself, classifies trades and transportations as services. In contrast, prices for goods measured by the CPI typically include the value of the good, the value of transporting the good, and the trade margins associated with the sale of the good. Hopefully you see the difference. So I think that's what's going on here. And you can see right here, utilities, you can see in motor vehicle insurance, maintenance, repair, electricity. Hopefully you get what I'm putting down. So what is this all telling us? I think they're telling us that they think PPI is coming in lighter than expect. That's what I think they're telling us. Now, if we take a look at that, there's another discrepancy besides that that's going on and this one's really important too. And again, there's a lot in this video and I would appreciate it if you would share this video so people can get ahead of this, uh, continually trading. And then I was on the phone with a couple people tonight. So this one's going out a little bit late, but I would really appreciate if you share this. So if you go out here and we pop Mara and um, we pop in Bitcoin, and then we're gonna pop in MSTR. And then people heard me say this in the room today and they couldn't figure out why I did it when I did it. So I'm gonna show you all how to do what I did today by selling this ahead of time and then putting myself in a position to actually short. And let's go to this day, but let's do it on a five because that'll be cleaner. I think that'll be cleaner. Um, I don't like this one. This one's bothersome. Vexing, isn't it? There we go. Let's go and just do today. And now I think we can do the one. And what you're always looking for as a trader is what? You're always looking for discrepancies because if you can spot them, you can make a huge difference. And what we're seeing right here, let's get to that 930 level. So what are we starting to see right in here already? And now the blue is Bitcoin. And what we're starting to see here with Mara and then the light blue or teal, I guess, is micro strategies. And what we're starting to see is before you start making the lower low in here, these already are starting to roll, aren't they? So these already are starting to make lower lows and we can start to see that. So before Bitcoin even starts, even when Bitcoin is down here, take a look at it, you can see it right here, right? This takes the low and goes higher. This takes the low and what's it do? Goes lower. So what you started to see was you started to see a disparity first thing this morning, if you really want to get into it and we overlay, see if we can do it this way and move this over and if it will let me do it this way. It might not let me show the pre and the post ahead of this because Bitcoin's in here. So we're not going to do it that way. We'll just do it this way. What you'll start to see here is you'll start to see a discrepancy where Bitcoin holds and these don't. So let's just draw that line from there and we'll pull this one up and we'll leave that one there for a second. So once you started to break here, what already happened by the time that that broke from that zero line? Well, this one already broke, right? You already broke. This one already broke. You already broke before this did. You already knew that you had a problem with the names before you had a problem with Bitcoin. And so when I saw that, I actually saw pre-market. That's when I got out. I got out of those names pre-market. And then what we did was we actually went on the short side of it with Mara and we bought puts and I bought stock. 
or short stock as well uh, and did quite well with the trade. The reason for that is because you're using the relative strength of this. You can do this with the socks. You can do this with anything. It works. It makes your decision-making process so easy. There's no guessing. You're just trading what's actually happening. And I would strongly suggest that you look at it. That was how we were able to identify that trade today. As far as underlying names, I mean, we would be remiss to not talk about SMCI and the fact that you now have a 1040 target price on it. And that was for 12 to 18 uh, you know, months. And I think that made us through, uh, through Thursday, got us through Thursday. And uh, here we are. And it is what it is. They want to own it. And now they're squeezing the heck out of it. And it should be fun to see what the market makers do, because now they're in triple digits, right? Now you're in quadruple digits. But this is just fascinating. Now, one of the things they asked me tonight in the room, and I'm going to explain it to you so that you can see it as well. This is the options SMCI. And what I was saying that what we've been doing is every time it closes at a high, people in the room are just doing the same trade that I'm doing. It, if it closes at a new high, you just buy the out of the money next strike and then you come in the next day and sell them and it's been working really well. It's going to work, guys, until it doesn't work, right? So the goal is you just keep doing it until one day. Guess what's going to happen? It's not going to be, it's not going to work. And that day may be tomorrow, but you never know when it's going to be. But believe me, one day it will not. So what I was saying to them today before the close, and hopefully you get this before eight, but See all this volume right here? See how there's nothing in here, in between here? So let me pull this up so you have a drawing tool here. And I know this is probably a little bit longer and probably should have done this on a Saturday, but I think this is really important for tomorrow. So I want to get this out. See the difference in volume between these two? You have no volume in here. If you don't have volume in here, he's not hedged. So he, the, meaning he, the market maker. So the market maker in between all of this, right, is not hedged, right? He's not hedged till about here. So when you get up in here, okay, it gets very easy for it to push, okay? So where is he at right now? 10.30 after hours? So when he comes in tomorrow, where's the hedge? Here. So he's not hedged till when? Right around that 10.70 level. So everything in here with all this volume, you don't have any volume. Matter of fact, how many puts you have in here? You take, start taking a look at the put side of that. Do you have any puts in there? Not to here, okay? So you have nothing in here. So he's not gonna be hedged. That's why between here to here, what you'll see in the stock, watch this tomorrow, and then you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. I'll, spoiler alert, I'll be right. But what you'll see is you'll see this move faster. And then when you start getting up here, you'll start seeing the hedges. So between here and here, you should start seeing it moving. How are you identifying that? You're looking at the volume. I'm not looking at the open interest. I'm looking at the volume, right? I'm just watching the volume. You could say, oh, it's the open interest. We can, we can agree to disagree for now. But you see where you're at right now? And you can see where you're going, all right? So you don't have anything in there, and that's why. And I know this is a pretty long video for Thursday, but there's a lot to cover there. And I think we'd be remiss in not covering that. Now, I had a trade after hours that I did, um, which I did exceptionally well with. And I want to just walk through how this was done because I was asked about this as well. And I think that you guys will find it interesting. And it's something that you can all do as well. And I want to show you how to do this. So I'm going to pull this down so you can see AMAT. And then I want to show you this so you can get this. And you're going to want to watch this tomorrow because it crushed. So I'm just going to show you the timestamp really quickly. I might walk through the whole trade later, but here's the timestamp. And when I see the news and I see their headlines and I see everything, I just type out what I'm doing, especially after hours. I'm, you have to be super quick. And I type out the other names that are going to move along with it. So everybody knows that if they want to act, go from there. This is just another gentleman in the room. I didn't have time to cut him out. And then when I'm up, I tell when I'm out of the trade and what I made on the trade. So everybody knows where I got out. Look at the timestamp and you can see right here and it's all timestamped. All right. So why am I doing what I'm doing? How am I doing what I'm doing? All right. A couple of things. Number one, let's look at this chart. So if we are to zoom out on this chart, there is nothing there that's going to tell me that level, right? Okay. So then what we do is we go back and we take a look at this and we drill into that and go, well, how are you coming up with that level? Why are you marking that level off, right? How are you coming up with it? All right. A couple of things here. First and foremost, how are you entering in that bar and why are you entering in that bar? This is really important. This news hits and it's a solid quarter, but it's the guidance. And then you see this. We did another trade like this today. People in the room will remember. You see that gap in between these two? This, and you'll see this. You'll see this a lot in SMCI, and you can actually predict the move. This is actually called a rising window. It's actually a candlestick pattern. What you have here is the difference between here and here, that you literally, at this particular moment in time, you had no sellers between here and here. And they have to gap it up in order to find a seller. When you see that, it's telling you that nobody wants to get out of the trade. It's called a rising window. On the way down, you know what it's called? A falling window. We really should call it, we should really call it out the window, but it's called a falling window. All right, 
So once you see that, it's on. So you're getting in, and then what you're doing once you're in is you're just pulling money out the entire way, right? Once you get here, here's your open. Your open gaps up over, right, over this. Your open is gapping up over your high. Pushes, once you reverse through that, you're done. Once you're up and you reverse through that after hours, it's done, right? It should never do that. It should have enough buyers to carry them. Once those buyers are done, that's it. So what happens here is then this forms a candle. Once that candle forms, even if you're not out, if you're not gonna read this and you wanna see if you get the doji or not, that's it, it's game over. You will note from that level, you never came back from it. That's it, that's the end of the game, all right? So, the, so how do you know it's over? You pop over that line. It reverses back over the open and over the previous close where it could never get before because it actually gapped up. Do you get that? Hopefully you get that. You gapped up from here to here. So if you are looking at it this way, let me clean on that. Let's open this way up so you get it, right? This is where you closed. That's the next bar that opened. Does that pattern look familiar? Yes, it's the same pattern here, only it reversed, right? Patterns are everything. So once you have that pattern and you push, because you would open and go higher, then you go below that, you, they shut the window. It's not good. It's not good when they shut the window. So when you see that, you just get out of the way, all right? So that's how I was able to get in and out of that so fast. I was asked for those, so I hope that helpful. AMAC crushed, DraftKings, pulled like the best move of all time. They lowered guidance, or I'm sorry, they missed and then they raised guidance, dropped Mike and said, oh, by the way, conference calls tomorrow at 8.30. It's just a classic move because you could be short and you just don't know what you're gonna get tomorrow. It's kind of funny that they did that. Uh, I think we'd be remiss in talking about coin. Uh, they crushed. I thought it was gonna be an absolute dumpster fire. It just absolutely was not. They absolutely crushed. Uh, where this goes tomorrow, I don't really have a clue, but you're setting up here. And uh, if you told me that, you know, coin was going to be up like this on earnings, yeah, I'd be a little shocked. And I'm not really sure. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to actually going through the quarter and seeing what people have to say about it. But I'm, I am really shocked by that move. And we'll go from there and we'll see what's happening there. But you're going to want to watch the big guys tomorrow. You started to see a lot of these semis try to move at the end of the day. I think AMAT might create a little bit more semi-love tomorrow. Uh, and I wouldn't sleep on some of these names. Remember, three-day weekend. 